Hello, my name is Todd Rothman, and welcome back to Organic Chemistry 1. In this video, we're going to learn about hydrocarbons. In the larger context, this chapter is about functional groups. Now, hydrocarbons by themselves may not be a functional group, which we'll learn about soon, but it's always a good place to start because most of the molecules that we'll deal with have a large hydrocarbon component and then some other functional groups attached to that hydrocarbon. So let's get started. Let's talk about the hydrocarbon. And as you can see here, these are the sections that we're going to cover. And a lot of this is actually review from chapter one stuff, but we're going to go over it again because it's important that we refresh our memory. Okay, the first thing here is talking about the types of hydrocarbon. And of course, that uh, should lead you to the question as to what is a hydrocarbon, right? So hydrocarbons are molecules that just contain H's and C's. Now it turns out that you can have components of a molecule, portions of a molecule that are hydrocarbon based, but maybe not the whole molecule is a hydrocarbon. But for now, we're going to focus where the entire molecule is a hydrocarbon, H's and C's, that's it. Okay, now there are a few different types of hydrocarbons, and the first one here that we see is the alkane. And an alkane is where we have what's called a saturated, fully saturated hydrocarbon because it has the maximum number of bonds for each carbon, four bonds per carbon, okay? So they're sp3 carbons and it's all single bonds to H's and carbons, that's it. Okay, now when you have a hydrocarbon like this, so let's write that out, this is fully saturated and it's all sp3 carbons, right? These are the things that we discussed back in the first chapter. Well, the formula is CnH2n plus 2. Now, what that means is that if you know the number of carbons, then n equals that number, and you could plug in 2n plus 2 for the total number of h's. So let's do a quick example. Let's say I have ethane, so that's two carbons, then since each carbon has four H's, or it has to have four bonds, I should say, um, then that means that they must have three H's for each of those carbons, right? Now I have two carbons bound together covalently, and they have H's, three around each. So think about the formula. Two carbons, right? So two times two is four, plus two is six, and that's what we see here six H's. So that's it. That's how we work that formula, okay? So it's the number of carbons, and that's how you plug it in. Now, another type of uh, hydrocarbon, but it, one that's going to have less than the maximum number of H's, is a ring system. So cycloalkanes are rings. So these are where we have a ring, um, some sort of ring system, and the formula is actually CnH2n, that's it, nothing else. So for example, imagine if I was to have, let's say, a carbon. Let me, uh, I guess I'll do it in red. So there's a carbon here and there. And let's just put one more right there. So there are four carbons, and they make up this ring. Then each carbon already has two visible bonds, so they must have H's, right? So there's two H's here and there and all around, H's, two times. That gives each of these carbons four single bonds. So this is a cycloalkane because it's a ring, and that's what it would look like in terms of filling in all the H's. Now, if you think about the formula here, it should be four carbons times two is eight, and so as you could see, we have eight H's all around this cyclic system. So that's how this formula works two times the number of carbons, in our case, four. That'll tell you the H count. Okay, now this cycloalkane is sp3. Every carbon is single bond. There's no double bonds. Now, you could have cycloalkenes and alkynes. We'll learn about them later on. But for now, we're going to deal with a cycloalkane, okay? Next one up is alkene. And notice that the alkene formula has the same formula as the cycloalkane because we're removing two H's to make a double bond. I'll show you that thought experiment right now. Let's say we have right here a fully saturated alkane, okay? Now, if I wanted to make this alkane into an alkene, 
then the carbons have to double bond to each other, right? So we have to make a double bond. And the way that we would do that is by erasing an H from each of these two carbons and in turn allowing for a double bond to form between them. So notice that in order to do this, we have to remove two H's, one from each alkane carbon, and then it could become a double bond. So that's why the formula is CNH2N, as we see here, okay? Now, let me just clean this up. Alkanes, unlike alkanes, alkenes have a geometry of 120, which we'll see next, but I'm going to draw it out proper here. So we have a bond that looks like this. That would be the alkene. Now this is unsaturated because we don't have all sp3. We have sp2 carbons in this case, right? So it's unsaturated. The only time you have a saturated hydrocarbon is if each carbon is sp3. If there's an sp2 or an sp, it is not saturated, fully saturated. It's called unsaturated, okay? And that's that right there. Alkyne, same logic. If we want to take an alkene and make it into an alkyne, you pull off two more H's and now you can make a triple bond. So for an alkyne, we have a triple bond and an H on both sides. So notice the formula CnH2n minus 2, right? So pulling out another 2. From an alkane, if you, you have to kind of think about it from the alkane. Alkane has six H's. If you want an alkene from this alkane, then you're going to have two less, four H's. If you want an alkyne, you have another two left, uh, two less, that's two H's. So here we have two H's, right? So two times two is four, minus two is two, and that's the formula, okay? This is also unsaturated because this has an SP carbon, one or more SP carbon, it's unsaturated. The only way it's saturated is if it's all SP3 carbons, that's it, okay? Finally, aromatic. This is another type of hydrocarbon. Now, aromatic is interesting. We're going to learn all about its chemistry either at the end of this semester or the beginning of next semester, but we're going to have to know a general idea of what it looks like. Now, the most common aromatic system is a benzene, and that would be where we have, for, for example, benzene would be a six-membered ring, and each carbon in that ring system has a double bond to its neighbor. So that would be an aromatic system right here. Every carbon has only one H on it. And the reason why is because if you look at each carbon, each carbon in this ring system without the H has three bonds, a double bond to one side of it and a single bond to the other. That's three bonds. So to get to four, you need one H. So notice the interesting formula here. An uh, aromatic system, and this is benzene for one example, there are many aromatic systems, this is just one example, aromatic systems have the same number of carbons to H ratio, or they actually have less H's to carbon. That's a very important identifier that you're dealing with an aromatic system. If you have more carbons or equal carbons to H's, then it's probably an aromatic system, okay? That's something that you should see here in this notation. So aromatic system, one example is benzene. And there are, like I said, many examples, but we don't have to learn about all the rules. There's a bunch of rules to determine aromaticity, but we're not going to learn those rules right now. So for now, just be familiar with benzene. That's the most popular. And let me just clean up this double bond. So here's a double bond right there. Okay, so you have a six-membered ring, double bond alternating around the whole six-membered ring, so double, single, double, single, double, single, all the way around. That's your aromatic system. Okay. So as I mentioned before, saturated hydrocarbons, all carbons must be sp3. Unsaturated, either one or more carbons are not sp3. They're sp2, they're sp, and that's how you know it's unsaturated. So aromatic systems are unsaturated, right? Because every carbon is sp2, and so it's an uns unsaturated system. Okay. So that covers hydrocarbons, and this is as far as I want to review. Remember, this is all review. A lot of this stuff we discussed back in Chapter 1. So if there's anything that's not clear, which I don't think is the case probably, but if it isn't clear, then you should go back to Chapter 1 and take a look. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now this is... Uh